Joining me now, Jason Hayes, Director of Energy and Environmental Policy with the Mackinac Center for Public Policy. Uh, Jason, I want to ask you because we're dealing in Michigan with the smoke from the Canadian wildfires, also in New York and D.C. and Philly. Um, you're hearing a lot of people suggesting this is climate change, but you've done lots of research on forest management, land management, and it turns out that it's, it's easy for some to maybe say that, but there's a lot more that goes into this. Yes, uh, definitely. So that is, uh, it's a simple or probably even a simplistic uh, answer to uh, pop out as soon as like, okay, there's a wildfire. Well, it must be climate change. Well, challenge with that is we had as many or more fires back in the 1800s and, you know, even before that. So it's not like this is a new phenomenon. Wildfires happen almost pretty much every year and some years are dry and we have bigger wildfires. So it's not unusual. So just simply tagging these wildfires with the term climate change is again, it's probably a little bit too simplistic. So what is your research showing out there? What is the cause causes of massive wildfires? Like, like we're seeing now in Canada. Yeah. The, Biggest thing really that's causing this is uh, improper forest management. So um, what's happened is uh, over the past several decades, really preservationist attitudes have taken over a lot of the, the government offices that are responsible for managing forests. And so with those preservationist mindsets, there's an idea that basically we shouldn't, humans shouldn't be using the forest, that humans are a negative influence on the natural environment. And so what we really need to do is preserve forests in an untouched or pristine state. And so what happens then is if you're not in the forests actively managing them, then you start to get growth. And so for forestry terms, this is called fuel loading. And so you get uh, more grass growing up, shrubs growing, uh, smaller trees and that sort of thing. And then the existing trees also tend to, as they get older, they start to die. They're more prone to insect infestations or disease like root rot and that kind of thing. And so as they die, they become dried out. And really what happens then is you, the, you get a mix of all of that fuel when a fire starts it can really take off because there's just a lot of things to burn. The question is, why isn't um, the proper management being done, but there's one place where it is. You went down there actually, and you did research, and we have this at Mackinac.org, uh, the state of North Carolina, correct? Yeah, so I'll, I'll hold up the, the report that I did. Oops, we'll try to get yep. this up. So it was called First in Forestry, and uh, I did it in, the report and the research in partnership with the John Locke Foundation, which is the state-based think tank, a free market think tank in North Carolina. And with their help and their guidance, I did the research, talked to a lot of uh, North Carolina foresters in government, in industry, and then other uh, areas as well, talked to businesses and that. And came away actually quite impressed with the way that the state and the federal government in North Carolina are actively managing their forests. They're allowing for uh, a mix of human uses. So that's what national forests were actually set aside for back when they were initially created is multiple uses. And that included harvesting, uh, spacing and thinning, mining, fisheries, uh, outdoor recreation, a, a whole host of activities that people should be doing. And so while a lot of states have sort of closed them off and all that really happens in a lot of these forested areas is non-motorized outdoor recreation, North Carolina has really opened it up and actually embraced that original idea of multiple use. And uh, last question, that leads people to believe, you know, why aren't these other states doing this? But if they want to, they have your research, obviously, and they can look at. Um, it, it sounds like it, it is working in North Carolina, so others should look into this. Yeah, so 
North Carolina seems to be very effective at it. When I was down there in the state, they were doing, like I said, a bunch of different things. One of the big things that they're doing is prescribed burns. And that really, um, you, you set up a, a burn where you literally go in and you set fire to portions of the forest, but you do it at certain times of the year when it's going to be cooler and wetter, like in early in the spring or very late in the fall after a snowfall or something like that. And you know, based on the weather conditions and the fuel conditions, that you don't need to worry about a big fire blowing up. But when you do allow those burns, you, you remove a lot of the, the built up fuel. So it's kind of like going in and cleaning out your yard in the spring. You know, you mow the lawn, you, you prune away all the dead stuff on the trees, and it, it kind of cleans it out and opens it up. They're doing very similar things in state and federal forests in North Carolina. And what that does is it not only makes the forests healthier, like they can grow better, when the trees are released from the competition and that sort of thing, they actually grow better. But it also reduces disease and insect infestation and reduces wildfire risk. So yeah, North Carolina is doing it better. And again, yeah, other states should be doing that as well. And clearly Canadian provinces too. Exactly. Thank you, Jason, for joining us. We have your research, Mackinac.org. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Thanks. Glad to do it.